the world around us is like this single big continuous mess of stuff. So if you take sound, sound is just vibrations through the air. You know, there's air and there's vibrations. My voice is producing some of them. Other, you know, there's birdsong, background sounds. They're all just rippling through the air and there's no border between each one. But that's not how we perceive reality because it's not very useful. So what our brains do is they detect patterns. There are lots of frequencies coming out of my out of my mouth right now that are varying together as I open and close my mouth. And it's useful, because I'm trying to communicate to you, it's useful for your brain to recognize that and to say, that's one thing, that's a voice. And I can dismiss the background sounds and I can pay attention to this voice. But it's really important to realize that in reality, the voice doesn't exist, really. There's this rippling, there is a pattern there, but without someone with a brain to perceive that pattern, there's just this rippling through the air. And this is foundational for understanding the strangeness of how perception relates to reality. Because what you perceive is your concepts. You perceive a voice you perceive an English male, perhaps, you're perceiving certain categories. But in reality, the voice doesn't exist, really. Englishness doesn't exist inside me. Even maleness doesn't exist as something inside me that you can directly perceive. It's all happening in this way that you have built up expectations in your head of what the world is like, and then what you're seeing is activating those concepts and your perception is the concept it's not the reality beyond it